What is going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, you've seen me mess around with ESP32 Wi-Fi Marauder so many times now, I probably have over a dozen Marauder boards. I've got boards with screens. I've got boards with logos, not just mine, but also AWOCs. I've even got boards with cameras. But what I don't have is a board with GPS. Well, today that's going to change. I'm going to take the original Big Chungus prototype board that AWOC sent me, and I'm going to go ahead and attach this GPS module to it right here. This is the Hi Let Go GY Neo 6MV2 Neo 6M GPS flight controller module. You may ask, why am I doing this? Well, it's to do something called war driving. So obviously that begs the question of what is war driving? Well, war driving is traveling around or driving around and recording the GPS locations of Wi-Fi networks and devices. Now, once that information is recorded, it gets uploaded to sites like Wiggle.net. Wiggle.net takes all of that information and then it puts it on maps. So it shows basically where Wi-Fi devices are, Bluetooth devices, also cellular networks, anywhere in the world, all over the place. It really just goes to show you that, you know, people are out there collecting all sorts of information. So you really do need to be careful about what you do with your data. It's been a while since we had to break out the soldering iron, so I'm excited for this one. Let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is take apart our Chungus board and figure out how we're gonna get this whole thing mounted. So let's switch over to the top-down camera and figure this all out. All right, so we've got our Chungus board. I pulled a screw out accidentally, but it's fine. We'll make it through this and let's take this apart. Okay, so inside here we have, there we go, the board and our antenna here. So I'm going to, for the sake of ease of this, let's disconnect this antenna. A little bit tricky to do, but if we kind of be nice to it, there we go. We can get this separated. I'm going to end up drilling a hole in this board, and that's going to be how we get through. And we're actually going to mount both of these to the back here. So not super graceful. I was going to try to actually extend this case to make it all fit inside, but this is a prototype board. And unfortunately, I think AWOC doesn't have the, uh, the STLs for this print anymore. We'll kind of deal with that when we get there. But first of all, we want to start to put some wires on this guy. Okay, so what we're looking at right here is actually the, uh, the again, the prototype for an ESP32 V4. I went to print the actual V4 case and turns out, yeah, doesn't fit, completely different board. But again, won't be a big deal. Now looking closely at our GPS module right here, you'll see that it's got VCC, TX, RX, and ground. Really, really easy. So all we have to do is hook up the VCC to 3V3, the ground to ground, and then TX and RX. Those pins are, the TX goes to IO09, and the RX goes to IO21. Super easy on there. Uh, on the board itself, it's really hard, but uh, they're basically the bottom, well, the second one from the right on the bottom, and then four or five up on the left. So let's grab the soldering iron and uh, get some wires attached to this sucker. Make me some room, throw those there so we don't lose them. That can go like that. And then, bam, whoops, get out of here. And then we can grab the handy dandy PCB holders that AWOC sent me. These things are absolutely a total lifesaver. So we'll get this thing mounted up. So then we can solder this up in style and class. Now you'll notice on this PCB, AWOC's got some really cool purple solder mask and white silk screening. So if you want to do something like this on your own, that brings us to today's sponsor, PCB Way. Now PCB Way is your one stop place to get pretty much anything you need to get done done for any of your creations. If you caught the video last week, I was putting on the clear case that I had PCB Way put on. Look at how absolutely gorgeous this thing is. Now they have a ton of other materials. You can get them in colors. You get, they'll finally get a black flipper that you've always wanted. And also if you need a PCB made or assemble, they've got you covered there too. So if you have project ambitions, but just don't have the means of producing them, PCB way can help you guys out. As always, thank you so much PCB way for the continued support. Let's get back at it. So for this project today, I'm going to be using my handy dandy pencil. So why am I using this instead of my TS-100? Well, actually just to show off this really cool clear case that Conda sent me, or Lord Conda as you all know him by. So let's get this thing fired up and uh, let's get at it. Gonna want this guy, go ahead and fire it up. Boom, I'm actually using a uh, old laptop charging cable, 
but it works perfectly for this application. Let's make sure we don't burn everything. So today we're gonna be using our handy dandy 30 gauge bailing wire or wrapping wire for that matter. Uh, I know everybody thinks it's a little bit crazy to use, but it's what I got and I got a lot of it. So that's what we're doing. So let's go ahead and cut ourselves some wire. I really don't know exactly how long these need to be because again, we're just kind of flying by the seat of our pants at the moment. So I'm just gonna cut four wires. They're gonna be relatively long because they're gonna have to go through the case that we're gonna have to drill a hole in. I'm gonna knock that down because you know, that's how we do. And then we've got a bunch of wires that we can use. Clip, clip, let's fix this guy. Sorry, buddy. I'm gonna probably knock this thing over like at least a dozen times during this whole process. So let's get used to it and get this out of here. Doink. Then go ahead and strip the ends of our wires. Don't need a ton exposed. Perfect. So the first thing I'm gonna do is attach 3v3 and ground. So I'm actually gonna flip this around. We're gonna attach those to the back of this board. I think it's gonna be a little bit easier, a little bit cleaner. Now I always triple check this. I'll grab my, my flipper right here and I'll make sure everything's lined up and plugs in. So my 3v3 is gonna go to this guy right here. So let's get that one plugged on. Hit the plus button, get this thing firing up. Get us some solder going. Oh, forgot flux. I always forget flux. Let me grab that. Little bit of flux. Teeny bit, come on. It's always so hard to not just get a huge blob, so I'm always like so careful. And it still oozes everywhere, so I guess it really doesn't matter. There it is, flux. All right, let's go ahead and tin our soldering iron. Now there's already solder on this, and I don't know if it's lead free or not, but uh, it's probably gonna be fine, right? Right, so get our wire in here, drop it on the floor, grab another one. This one will be perfect. Soldering this in the most awkward way humanly possible. And we're on, that's one down, three to go. Now there are three more grounds on this board because I need to you know, go to ground, so I'll use my solder to point. So that guy up there is ground, that guy right there is ground, and then that guy right there is ground. So for the sake of simplicity in wiring, this guy right here is right next door. So let's just grab this guy with a little bit of flux and we'll attach here. All right, careful with the soldering iron. And which wire do I want to use? Ah, uh, this guy's pretty good. I'm gonna tin this, just like we did last time. And then, the most awkward way humanly possible, because I'm doing this effectively upside down, it feels, but angle this guy, try not to burn that wire. Cool, and then you guys can see what I'm doing too. All I'm doing is slightly reflowing that, and it's on. Done and done. So those are uh, 3v3 and ground. So now we're gonna flip this over. And yeah, that looks about right. Move these wires so I'm not gonna accidentally melt them. Stay. And now the next two pins are gonna be the RX and TX. So the first one we're gonna solder is gonna be RX, which is actually IO21, careful. Which is that pad right, right there, that second one there. Now I wanna be really, 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 really careful that I don't bridge these, cause that'll just fry the whole thing. So we're gonna tin the tip of our soldering iron again with just a tiny bit of solder, not that much. We're gonna tin our wire and say if we can get it together with just what we have right here. So again, ever so carefully. And filming around a camera is always the most difficult thing of all. So get that to sit right on the pad. See if we can get, oh, forgot my flux. I always forget, oh no, I didn't, I didn't. Ha <laughs> ha, oh man. When you do this enough, you forget what you've done. Now it's on, but I wouldn't mind a tiny bit more solder. So just a little teeny tiny bit more. There it is. That's a nice solder point, right? Yep, nothing bridged. Clean off my tip and now to the TX. Let me carefully move my soldering iron out of the way to a place where it's not going to fall, not going to fall on the floor. It's not. Don't fall on the floor. Okay. And then I'm going to rotate this around. Now this next one's going to go to IO9, which is the fifth on up from the bottom. So one, two, three, four, and then, I really hope that's the right one. One, two, three, four, and then five. Yes, that's the right one. Scooch this out of the way carefully. Don't want to damage that wire. Gonna tin the soldering iron, then tin the wire. Okay, careful. And then, as carefully as possible, moving around the camera and the microphone. Get that lined up, and hopefully we don't burn our button out. A. 
there we go that's on there cool so there's our four wires that is the hard part honestly the rest of this is actually pretty easy because the pads on the gps module are huge okay so i'm going to take this off i think we're pretty much good on all of these for the moment take these out of the way these are fun there you go i wasn't i had no idea what these were when uh awok first sent them to me and I was like, dude, what are these? And when he told me, I was like, holy crap, these things are sick. So those four wires are gonna have to come out of this case somehow. I was trying to figure out a more clever way to do it, but I'm just gonna drill a hole in it. So let's go grab a drill and a bit and make some holes. Okay, while I'm at it, might as well clip this wire, the antenna wire back in place. And I mean, I guess it really doesn't matter. I guess this should be kind of in the middle here. So again, the design, the idea is it's gonna be kind of like this doesn't reach there we go probably be just like this so if I put a hole right in the middle there that should pretty much work for everything because this if I move it like that does this yeah okay yeah this will work this will work so why don't I put the holes right over here so the wires have a really short travel so I'll do that scooch these back out of the way oh yeah the antenna will still fit if I do yeah this will work this will work Oh wait, I'm an idiot. I actually already broke this case a little bit and this doesn't hook up to anything. So if I pour those out, right? I can just run those wires straight through, straight through the hole I already have. So I don't have to do anything, huzzah. Okay, so let's figure this out. Um, I don't need this for the moment. And let's get these wires kind of figured out. The easiest way for this to fit through the case, pop this back over here, is where do we have space to get from the top to the bottom? Whoops, that guy needs to be out of the way. This case fits really nicely. Yeah, so I don't have a ton of space either of those. Although I could go through here or just around this way. Since I'm coming out through that hole. Oh, this is going to be easy. This is going to be easy. Honestly, I feel like the hardest part of this is going to be not getting super confused as to what goes where. First of all, let's plug this back in since we're getting close to the reassembly stage. Not sure if this case is going to easily come apart once we get everything soldered back on, but I think it should, right? Oh god, it's gonna be hard to do. Meh, let's go from a different angle. I swear these little antennas are just the worst for plugging in. Nope. Ah, oh, thank god, finally got it on there. Okay, brilliant idea here. I have silver sharpie. If you don't have a silver sharpie, you're missing out. So what we're gonna do is the... We're gonna start, gonna start making lines on these. We're just gonna kind of mark which one's which. So, this is 3v3. So let's put three lines on 3v3. So one, two, three, no problem. So that's three V three ground. We won't even mark it all. So those will be ground. And then let's just mark this guy with like a long stripe, like all the way around, all the way around. And then this guy, let's just mark this with like two heavy bands, one there and then one there. So now we'll remember which was which. Cool, now that we have that all figured out, let's just put this back together, question mark. Get the wire kind of in the right spot. That sits like that. Cool. You're going to go through the hole. Let's kind of feed these guys. They're there. Two very boring minutes later. Perfect. Cool, cool, cool. So we're going to go ahead and actually just button this whole thing. Get up. Back up. Let's close it up. And then we'll move on to securing everything. All right, so what we're going to use to secure these guys is going to be some good old-fashioned command strips. Uh, you know, just like you use on, uh, you know, putting stuff on the wall. These should be good enough, and it's not permanent permanent, so if I do have a mistake or have to do anything over again, it'll be easy to fix. All right, so let's get these wires separated and figured out. Get everything kind of organized. So I guess we should just go in order here, right? So we'll start off with ground. So I don't often do this, but I'm actually going to introduce little grabby guy over here. Just so we don't get too close to our PLA. I don't want to melt anything. That would be unfortunate. That's a great noise. Creaky, creaky. And then let's pop this board on here and get it as close as we can to this board. Because we don't want to have a bunch of extra wires. What's good, though, is we can tuck it back in and you know reduce a lot of the excess wire a little bit lower possible perfect all right so first things first because i am super forgetful let's just drip these up nicely with some flux yep all righty never really have too much flux 
Let's get our wires figured out. That's too long. So I think, what did we say? That was TX. I'll double check that before I do anything. All right, one long. I believe that was RX. Again, we'll double check. And there are three lines, which are almost impossible to see, but you can kind of get them. That's going to be 3v3. Three three. Three. So this means that this is ground. So let's figure out about how long that needs to be. We'll cut it a little tiny bit longer and go from there. Okay, so let's say like around here. Hopefully that's not too short. Otherwise, I am screwed. Eh, no, it's a little short, but it's not that short. It's actually exactly what I wanted to do according to me right now. So let's see if we can get this stripped. We get a little bit more out of here and try not to. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. So what I'm going to actually see if I can do, this might be easier said than done. I want to go from the bottom up. Why do I want to do that? I don't know, but I just had that idea and that's, that's what I'm going to do. Did I get it? Cool. I did. All right. Now just to solder this guy in place. Easy. Let's shake everything in the process. Everybody loves that, right? Alrighty. And yeah, since I've already got the wire through the hole, this should go very easily. Done. Cool. One down. All right, cool. So in standard squash faction, I was actually looking back to double check something and I realized I put something on wrong. So let's open it back up and hopefully we don't break anything in the process. But yeah, I've got one of these in the wrong place. It should be pretty easy to fix at this point. Luckily, I didn't hook up the RX or the, the yeah, or the TX. Sorry, one of those. Let's fix our problems here. Okay. Yep. Easily move this. Then if we just flip this around, a bit of a mess. Yeah, that needs to be on the third one, not the second one. So let's just get in there real quick. Actually, let me flux it first. A little bit of flux, help this thing reflow. And then we can just yank it back out. Simple and easy. Grab it, there we go. All right, that's off. Let's grab a little bit more solder here. Drop it on the third pad. One, two, three. Actually, I should flux that too. This is why you double check stuff, kids. Even I make mistakes. Well, actually, even I, I make more mistakes than most. Don't worry. There we go. A little bit more solder. Just a little bit right on the tip there. Let's see if I can get this lined up easily. It's way harder now that I don't have it attached correctly, but we're gonna make it happen. A little bit of slack, give this a little bit of a bend. Plenty of slack on these wires, so it shouldn't be that hard to do. And then one, two, three, we wanna be in. All right, there we go. That saved me from having to reshoot this entire video. Fantastic. Now remember kids, I tell you that, you know, I don't lie about things. I try to be as upfront as possible and I am not perfect. So this is me making a big mistake and then showing you that I'm fixing it without lying or cheating about it. One, two, let's get it back in here. Again, luckily I didn't solder this one on and cut that wire. Otherwise I'd be in here replacing that, which would suck. So pop this back on, there we go. Turn this around, careful. Let's screw it back together. Move him. Gotta be careful with these case screws on here because I've gotten this thing taken apart and put back together so many times. It would not be hard to strip these out. That's how, whoops, see, exactly. That's how I broke the first one. However, that broken first one was kind of a happy accident and worked out well. Cool, so now we've got this back out here. Let's grab my arm again, grab our board, get it as low down as possible right here. Perfect. What's up guys, it's Editing Sasquatch here and I'm just gonna skip across all of the extra soldering here. I filmed literally 40 minutes of this. So I'm just gonna skip some stuff because you've seen me solder it together and you know how it works. Uh, just, you know, follow the diagram, everything works fine. All right, get rid of that arm. We don't need that one anymore. And let's figure out how we're gonna make all this stuff sit on here nicely. So that's actually pretty good right there. I might throw a little bit of hot glue to keep it all in place to make sure nothing gets damaged, but let's get it all taped together first. So dry fit, and actually let's connect our antenna because you know how good I am at that. 10 minutes later, I'll get this thing plugged in, I swear. Oh, that was easy. Cool, cool, cool. So I still want to be able to get to the screw holes. So this needs to sit like right there. And I think this can sit right here. So we've got our command strip here. Put it on the bottom. Is it still sticky? Oh, they're not sticky. Oh, well. Well, 
Plan B, I have more stuff. All right, out with the olds. These are like five-year-old command strip stuff, so thought it would work, but it didn't. But, you know, these things don't always work the way you want them to. Now I have this, like, really weird double-sided tape stuff, but it's super, super sticky. There we go. It's hard to see, but this will work just fine. Put this on here. I had this just in case I needed some reinforcing tape for the NFC board on my flipper when I was changing the, the cases and stuff around. That guy. Hopefully this has got enough thickness that it'll hold this PCB well. I think it will. I think it'll do the trick. Yeah, it should be no problem. That should be plenty. This stuff is so freaking sticky. Like, so freaking sticky. There we go. I don't have to stick it to itself too much. There we go. That should be good enough. I know I'm really awkward and I'm trying not to block the camera shots. Trying very, very hard. Slam that sucker down. And that is on there. That's not going to come off very easily. So I think, I think we're good. That's it. This is our brand new war driving GPS Wi-Fi Marauder. How cool is that? And yeah, you can see when I broke it, I put the, the screw in. And yeah, you can actually see the screws pushing through there. Uh, I've taken this thing apart and put it back together so many times that uh, it's, you know, about to fall apart. Yeah, this thing just looks so cool. I wish these were on the front side so you could see them, but it's so much more practical to put them on the back with the way everything's mounted. So let's go ahead and plug this into the flipper. There we go. Plugged in and Let's see, let me get this uh, focusing right. Hey, that's better. So if we go into Wi-Fi Marauder, so this is the brand new version of Wi-Fi Marauder, the brand new version of Marauder Companion. I actually had to compile it for XFW because that's not out yet. And now we'll notice if we scroll down here, we have War Drive. So that's super cool. So we'll select that feature. And what this is doing right now is it's uh, collecting all of the nearby Wi-Fi hotspots, and then it's attaching the GPS coordinates to it. That's super cool. So yeah, we're war driving right here. Uh, if you want, let's go hop over into QFlipper and see what these log files actually look like. I am gonna have to censor some stuff, obviously, because I'm doxing myself currently, but it'll give you a pretty good idea of what's going on. So let's hop over to there. All right, so let's hop on over to QFlipper and let's see what we got here. So it's going to be an SD card. We're going to be in our apps data, Marauder, and these are going to live in the logs folder right here. And you can see we've got some logs here and here is my war drive. Let's click download on that, save it to the desktop and let's take a look. Well, let's open up Notepad and take a look. So here we go. So you can see we've got the MAC address. We've got the AP name. And then we've got the time of day and we have got our GPS coordinates. So super, super cool. We can go ahead and upload it to uh, wiggle.net right now. I'm not going to, cause I don't want to put myself out there. Even though I have a feeling if you look up these GPS coordinates, you might be interested in what you find. And that's the war driving GPS add-on for Wi-Fi Marauder. It's a pretty simple little project. Just need to make sure you don't get your wires crossed. It happens to me once in a while, it happens to everybody but super cool and it works really well with AWOC's boards. After talking to AWOC too, I have a sneaking suspicion that they're gonna make uh, the GPS add-on a lot more accessible for people with Wi-Fi Marauder. Also like, how cool does this thing look? I mean, check this thing out, it's so neat. Got the board on the back, ceramic thing. Oh, if anybody noticed before, I did flip this around. The ceramic part is supposed to be facing out, not in. I had it on backwards. But again, we all make mistakes and it's a learning experience just as much for me as it is for you guys. Thank you all so very much for watching. I appreciate you guys. We'll catch you next time.